like he's on his way to a championship. Chuck is making another one of his late race charges to the front. Sal has got to be happy with the way his car driver performed tonight. It looks like another victory is in the bag. One lap to go. Chuck is in the lead. One through. Oh, whoa, whoa. Chuck's car has hit the wall. It looks like Chuck turned the car into the wall. Something must have broken in the car because it went straight into the wall. Buddy, Chuck. And he's got fresh tires to stay cool. You've only got a couple left to go. The 57 and 94 flew together as they circle the track. Drafting right behind you, Chuck. I can't hold him off. Yes, you can, Chuck. Just stay cool and bring it home. Yeah, that's easy for you to say. This thing is falling apart. The engine has no power. Chuck, the car is fine. Just drive your race and stop thinking about Buddy. Let me show you how it's done, Chuck. Hold on, buddy. He's gonna bump. He's gonna bump. Well, Chuck Jones, hold on for the lead. Time for the bump and run. Big touch. Chuck is battling. The 57 is into the wall. Buddy takes the lead in turn three and four. Buddy in the 94 takes a checkered flag. Buddy, how do you keep your driver's suit so clean? I like everything neat and tidy. Too easy, like right? Driving. Fuck you, Spencer. Well, there you have it. Neat and tidy, just how he passed the 57 on his way to victory. They don't call him Mr. Roboto for nothing. There you go, darling. We'd like to thank our speedball sponsor, Rob Furniture. Head over to Rob and check out his lazy Rob for clients. Come on, check it's over. Should have been us. Chuck, go get your kid, huh? Let's get out of here. I'll get back there someday. We'll get back there. Yeah, right. Give me a second, okay? Yeah. Hey, fans, thanks for coming out tonight. We'll see you next week at the Speedball for another night of racing action. Worm. Let's go. We've got a busy day tomorrow. Worm, drop that stuff and let's go. See the race? Most of it dead. You see the end? Did you win? I could have missed it. Missed it? How could you have missed it? I don't know. I was, I was reading. Reading? I get slammed into the wall? I lose the race and you're reading... Trigger... 
whatever the hell this is? It's trigonometry. Yeah, well, trigger whatever. It's waste of time. Hey, when are we gonna spend the night at my place? That's the deal. Weekdays with mom and weekends with dad and the pick bird. Cut that out. It's okay. So, Dad, do you think we can go to the zoo tomorrow? I told you we got a lot of stuff to do. Chuck, come on, take the kid to the zoo. Would it kill you? All right, fine. We'll go to the zoo. We'll be with the car first, and then we'll go check out the uh, the monkeys or something. That's what you always say. Yeah, Chuck, that's what you always say. I'm Rob of Rob's Furniture. And after a hard week of work, all you want to do is relax. And the best way to do that is in a Rob's Lazy Rob recliner. That's right, sit back, relax, and watch your favorite football game. Come on, football guys! And remember, all of our urban locations always have free popcorn. Ah, you dropped it! Hello, everybody, and welcome to your Speed Week recap here at the Glen. Well, folks, what we had here this past week was a real stunner. Roy Barker, the newcomer, comes all the way from the back of the pack to take victory here at this cup race. Um, I was watching that. What's the big deal? He just won his first cup race. Don't you want to see the interview? No, not really. <clears throat> it's not the normal NASCAR driver story. Tell everybody about where you cut your teeth. It was a little track called the Speed Bowl in the middle of nowhere. Chuck, he started here at the bowl, isn't that great? Yeah, I knew that. What, did you know him? Of course I knew him. I've been racing at the bowl forever, remember? You're jealous. Jealous? Jealous of what? <laughs> it's not like he won the Daytona 500 or something. Chuck, give me a break. He just won his first cup race. Whatever. I mean, he's not going to win the Daytona 500. Oh, and you will? Yeah, yeah, I will. You know why? Because when I win, I'm going to win big. And there's nothing bigger than the Daytona 500. Well, you know what? You're 45 years old. You better hurry up with that big break. Woo! 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 All right. How'd that feel? Pop well, what about you? Awesome. I mean, you've been stashing every cent you've ever made, and for what? The speed shop, you know that. Yeah, Chuck. Said 10, 10, five minutes late. Sorry about that. This traffic is uh, yeah. really bad. Those are Callaways. They're worth more than the car. It's open. OK. Listen, buddy, just get me to the airport as fast as you possibly can. I have a meeting in Los Angeles, LA. California. Got it, sir. The world's dirtiest man is here to clean something. Nice work, Joe. <laughs> How'd the race go last night? Oh, not so good. Jesus, you know this guy? That's all I can give you. I gotta get some engine work done. Green light, green. Fifty-five? Really, you're going fifty-five? Sir, you know what? There's a lot of police in this area, so it's, um... I don't see any. Not one cop. Sir. Listen to me, Chuck. If you don't get this thing moving, my company's never gonna use this company again. This ain't NASCAR, you know. Yeah. Next time they'll be in such a rush. Have a nice day.
300 bucks. Where am I supposed to find 300 bucks? Well, you can take the tip I'm gonna give you, which is nothing, and then use that. Rob's bed. I'm Citizen Rob. Join me for my once annual bedding sale and get yourself a Rob's bed. Don't know which one to pick? Sleep on it. Rosebud was a sled. Cooper is in critical but stable condition. Hey, Lou, you got that sponsorship money for last week? Chuck, you're making us look bad. Why should I give you money? You crashed your car into the wall with half a lap to go. You could have won that race. Oh, I almost won. That's not the deal, Lou. You still got to give me the sponsorship money. No matter what happens on the track, I mean, your name is all over the hood. No matter what happens. Like if you lose the company its second biggest account. That wasn't my fault. I mean, I mean what's that got to do with the sponsorship money? I mean, that happened on the street, not the track. I mean, you wouldn't even uh, wear this speedy limo mascot suit. It's a baseball suit, Lou. I mean, what's that got to do with limo driving or racing? Way to go, Turbo. Heard about what happened over at the Bridgeport. Not cool. Very not cool. Okay, you know what that guy demanded? That I... It's called customer service. Whatever the customer wants, you give him. Right. He asked me to speed, I did. He got caught. Hey, Lou, let me go over there, you know, talk to the guys, smooth things over a little bit, do a little damage control. You should be more like Steve here. Customers love him. He never gets complaints. I got a $300 ticket doing exactly what the customer wanted me to do. Who's going to pay for that? Excuse me, I just want to get one of these red ones. It tastes like cherries. Okay, Steve, can you just give us a second? Take it easy, Nitro. Just trying to help. Look, Lou, you got to give me that sponsorship money. I, mean, I need that money to get my car into the shop so I can race this weekend. It's not my problem. And uh, we're pulling our sponsorship. What do you mean you're pulling the sponsorship? Lou, I depend on that money for running my car. Find another sponsor. Fired up. I don't like the way that sounds. Sounds like it always sounds. No, I gotta rebuild the top. It's gonna be expensive. Okay. We'll just fix it, Gomes. I, you know, I want a little bit more punch out of it. Yeah, I'll fix it. I just gotta know you got the money to pay for it. That's all. I got bills to pay, you know? I'll get the money. Yeah, well, I just gotta be paid before you pick up the engine. No. No money, no engine. You got it? I got it. Well, I, I just want to make sure you know, because th there was this other guy who came and he said he got it. But when the time came, he had no money. And that other guy said he got it. But when he showed up with no money, it's like he didn't get it. I get it. I get it. OK, please, just stop. I get it. Just fix the engine, OK? You don't have to make up an analogy for me to get it when I get it. Yeah, yeah, I know. But the other guy, he came with nothing, right? Now, if I give you the engine, I got nothing. If you wrecked the car, we both got nothing. You got it? Got it. Hey, kid, stop playing with that. What is it? It's a perpetual motion machine, or the answer to America's energy needs. I'm gonna make millions off of it. Looks like a bunch of magnets to me. Or a never-ending source of electrical power for our American cities. Sure. For one thing, you're gonna need a new header. How much? You're in luck. I haven't got one. Well, that doesn't sound lucky to me. Sure it's lucky. Now you get to go to a junkyard and find one for yourself. Where'd my last header come from? From a junkyard. Then why did I pay 350 bucks? Uh, because I sourced it for you. From a junkyard. Is this it? That's from a V6.
Worm. Is that it? So, are we going? The zoo's gonna close soon. Yeah, 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 we're going. Closed? I mean, I mean, they have to put the animals to bed. Speaking of animals, I should drop you off at your mother's. I actually thought we were gonna go to the zoo today. Worm, come on. Did your dad give you that check? Nope. Three weeks in a row. Did he have fresh rubber on the car? Mm, not sure. Was he in the lead? For a while. So what happened this week? Crashed on the last lap. You know, I used to think that your dad, he didn't want to win. I thought he just maybe wanted to mess up his car so he could run around with his friends the next day, but I don't know, I'm kind of thinking maybe he's just not good enough to win. Well, he doesn't have any friends anymore. All he does is hang around with Cheryl. What's going on with the lights? Why is it dark in here? Uh oh. Ugh. What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. Why are you smiling? I got the whole uh, shop hooked up to the solar array here. Great, great. Because for a minute there, I thought you were going to tell me something's wrong with the engine. <laughs> well, uh, Chuck, we do have a, uh, uh, a slight problem with the engine. Then there is something wrong. Why'd you say there's nothing wrong if something's wrong? What's wrong? We gotta rebuild the heads. When did you find that out? Yesterday. Why didn't you call me? Well, I thought you were broke. I am broke, but why didn't you call me? Well, I was getting around to it. <sighs> How much? My hours times 95 per hour. Ballpark? I can't say. Gomes, you've done this over 100 times. what did it cost last time? I can't say. If you had to say. Oh, what? What difference does it make? You can't afford it. Well, how do you know I can't afford it if you don't tell me how much it costs? All right, I tell you what, you give me the word and I will fix it. Okay. Fix it. And where are you going to get the money to pay me? You fix the engine. I'll get the money. Oh! You all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. Here, come on. Help you up. Let me see. Oh! Let me buy you a beer. Okay. So why do you want to get the car fixed so badly anyway? Well, some fourth in points, some win some money this season. What do you win for fourth? Uh, a few grand. Yeah, but that's what you need to get the car fixed. Exactly, that's why I'm going to be able to pay you. Yeah, but then you'll have no money left over for you. Yeah, so? Well, but you already have no money. Why go through all the trouble? You're already there. Gomes, you of all people should understand this. I mean, it's not about the money. It's about figuring out whether I can do it. I mean, it's about finding out if I'm a, a race car driver or a limo driver. Which one are you? I don't know, Gomes. I don't know.
Speed Week at Daytona. It's the start of the NASCAR season. It's where all of NASCAR's big guns come out. All, of course, hoping for a chance to win the Daytona 500. Those neck tail pump boys, pretty boys, they got nothing on us. So get them down here to the Speed Bowl and we'll show them a thing or two. So you really think one of us could beat a cup driver? Well, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about Buddy over there. You got ice water in his veins, and that's what it takes to win. Well, I had one of the fastest laps last week. But you lost. What was it this time? Something mechanical? No, the car was fine. I, I just screwed up. Yes, I thought. You know, racer. Racer never blames himself. He blames the car, or the track, or act to God, or, or maybe he farted out the wrong time. I got news for you, Chuck. The only breakdown you had is in there. It happened 20 years ago, and it just keeps on happening. Why are you here? Listen, Sal, I'm third in points with one race to go. I figure the worst I could do is fifth place. And I'm just wondering if uh, maybe you could advance me the fifth place money so I can get my car to the shop so I can get into next week's race. You get the purse money after the race. Sal, so, I'm just looking for a favor. You want a favor? Ask your girlfriend to rub one out for you. Come in here and talk business. That's the way it's got to be. It's just business between you and me. And that's the way it's got to be. Excuse me, Sal. Rob's here to see you. Come on, get out of here. Got a real businessman's coming in here. With Rob the furniture guy? Yeah. I like his commercials. <laughs> They're cinematic crap. Rob, what brings you here today? I just want to tell you how much I appreciate everything you do down here at the track for me. Oh, thank you, sir. And uh, that's why it kills me that I have to tell you that I have to pull my sponsorship. Well, you can't do that. We, we have a partnership. Rob's Furniture Superstore is going nationwide. I just opened my 20th store. I can't afford to keep doing this local track sponsorship. You have to understand that. Well, folks, this is the American dream, and here's why. Anyone can get in this race, and anyone can win it. All you have to do is have a fast car, and it better be fast, because these big boys know a thing or two about speed. You qualify, and you're in. You've got a chance to win. The I got an idea for you. The Super Bowl of racing. What, Sal? Daytona, Rob. We're going to take a car to Daytona, and you can't beat that kind of exposure. Yeah, I don't know if you've watched my commercials recently, but I don't have 20 million to throw at a NASCAR sponsorship. I know, Rob. <laughs> but we're going to qualify our way in. I don't understand. They got 43 spots. 40 are for the teams, and three are for whoever can take it. And we're gonna take one of those spots. And who's gonna drive the car? Well, I got Buddy. Buddy? If you build him a car, I guarantee he'll race his way into Daytona. Just imagine the press. Small town kid takes NASCAR by storm. Or it's like Davy and Goliath. That's a fucking cartoon about a boy and his dog. They're made of clay. What does that have to do with racing? What, because they preach values? I got values for you, $500,000. That's a lot of money. What if he doesn't make it? Then I'm out. He'll make it. He's the best I've seen in a long time. Yeah, well, no offense. I'd love to go with your gut on this, but you're asking for an awful lot of money. You're right. We'll have a race, eh? And then the winner will take your car to Daytona. A race. I like it. <laughs> we call it the Rob Shootout to Daytona. And I could use it as an opportunity to advertise my new line of Markless Wicker Furniture. All right. Deal? Deal. Hey. How was your day? Ugh, it's just starting. I saw the Gomes. The engine needs a top-end rebuild. Oh, crap. 
Lou pulled my sponsorship money. And Sal won't advance me any of the purse money, so I have to work double shifts just to pay off the gums. How about you? Well, I just milled a thousand of these things. What is that? Uh, I'll show you. Huh. See? They're going to sell for $9.95 plus shipping. They're going to make a fortune off of them. Wow. Yeah. How do people think of stuff like that? You know, believe it or not, some people don't spend every waking hour fixing and repairing race cars. Really? Crazy, huh? It's weird. What's up? Seatbelt. You guys wouldn't mind moving. Appreciate it, thanks. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sal, you told me I would get to drive the Daytona car. You will, buddy. The best driver gets to drive the car. So get out there and win this race. And let's get ourselves down to sunny Daytona. Okay, Sal. You know best. Okay, babe. Make him happy. Hey, hey, hey! Hey, give me my money! Hey, hey, give me my money now! Keep the chance.
Of all the furniture stores in all the cities in all the world, she had to walk into mine and buy all my lazy Rob recliners. Well, to her, I say, is looking at you, kid. And if you've got kids, bring them to Rob's furniture this weekend. You hey. Buy a lazy Rob recliner, hey. Your kid's getting a free balloon. That's a deal we can all drink to. <clears throat> Oh, God damn it. <laughs> On it. <sighs> How'd you make out? 128 bucks. I take away gas and tasty cakes that leaves me with $78. Well, it's like eight gallons of race gas or half a tire. <laughs> Thanks for cheering me up. What does Wicker Furniture have to do with NASCAR? Nothing. But next week, Rob's Furniture is sponsoring the Rob's Daytona shootout at the Speed Bowl, the winner of which will get to drive the Rob's Furniture Express in the Daytona 500. So the shootout is on, and the winner will take the Rob's Furniture Express down to Daytona this February. And for you at home, sit back and relax and get comfortable on this beautiful Markless Wicker Furniture, guaranteed not to leave an imprint. Or my name's not Rob. The forecast Chuck, did you hear that? Yeah, I sure did. I don't understand. How can it leave no marks on your skin? I mean, does it have cushions or something? No, Chuck, who cares about the wicker shit? The other part about the chance to race in the Daytona 500, I mean, it's like a miracle or something. Maybe we should do something else next weekend. I mean, what do you think? Maybe I should take the kid to the zoo. Chuck, what are you talking about? You hate the zoo. This is the chance of a lifetime. I mean, this is the big one that you've been talking about. We should be working on some setups right now. Cheryl, how am I going to race next weekend when it, without a car? I mean, at this rate, it's going to take me like a month to pay off the gums. Gums? That money-grubbing mechanic is going to bleed you dry. I mean, why can't we go to somebody else? Spencer builds engines for everybody else. Why can't he work for us? The gums builds a great engine. Chuck, can I see for a second? Can you wait? I don't think I can get up for you. It's important. What? Come on. Don't make me regret this, okay? <laughs> not known. What? That's crazy. I, mean, I was just thinking... <sighs> what if we try and... I can't do it. Then I know. How can I live my life knowing? Chuck. Chuck, come on. Let's give it a shot. I know he's ever given me anything. Never. Okay. You won't regret this. I promise. Okay. A shot. Yeah.
Nice move on the pickup call. Yeah, I'm late, Chuck, okay? I think I wear the nifty little waitress outfit just around the house, or? No, I'm here to pick up the kid. Okay, so, um, do you have my rent money? Oh, yeah. I'm ripped. <clears throat> Mind if I count it? I'm in a little bit of a rush. Will, your dad's here! How am I gonna pay the rent with this? Look, I gotta run. Just have him come down and I'll meet me in the car. Actually, you know what? You're gonna get back here and you're gonna put the rent money in my hand or I'm gonna have a judge put you in jail. Look, Katie, it was a really bad week. A bad week? Yeah. Huh. But I bet you have enough money in your pocket to get your car out of the shop or, I don't know, maybe some new tires? Well, I'm a little short for tires. Chuck, can you please just give me the rent money? Then I'm gonna miss the race on Saturday. And it's Rob's Daytona shootout. I mean, this could be my last big chance. Well, at least you won't be in jail, so it's your choice. Uh, you wouldn't. Try me. Katie, please, don't, don't do this to me. I mean, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, a chance to race at Daytona. I mean, have you seen the commercials? <sighs> Rob's Markless Wicker Furniture. I mean, it doesn't leave a mark on your skin. It's... Yeah, no. You know what? Your little racing fantasy can wait, okay? But if I get kicked out of this apartment, your son is gonna be living on the street, so maybe if you miss this race, you'll spend more time thinking about the people who are around you than that rolling shitbox of a car that you pour all your money into. You never understood, did you? Chuck, no, I understood. I dealt with your addiction for five long, hard years, okay? But that is why I left. Because you cared more about shocks and springs than you did the people around you. And I'm gonna be damned if you're gonna make me feel bad about some sheet metal. Okay, fine, fine. Here. But you're wrong. It's not about the machine. It's about the dream. Worm, come on, let's go! Oh, have a good time. Hey, Gomes, how's the car? Kid, stay away from there. She's all set. She's all set. Well, let's load her up. Yep, just finished preparing your bill. I hope you roll her in. Kid, what did I just say? Get away from there. Get away. Um, about that bill. Listen, Gomes, I, I could pay you next week, but I need the car for the qualifying race this weekend. What do you say, pal? Chuck, you know I'd love to give you this car. I really would, but you wreck the thing, where will I be? You'll be without a car, I'll be without money. So, Gomes, have you ever thought about using a catalyst to help modulate the hydrogen output? Yeah, I've tried everything. Now, get away from there. Chuck, why don't you sit this weekend out? Is it gonna be a demolition derby out there anyway? Take the kid to a baseball game or a movie, a science fair, maybe. Listen, Gomes, come on. I mean, this is my shot. This could be my last shot. You know how important it is to race in the, in the Daytona 500? I'm asking you, please. Just help me out this one time. Chuck, you want me to work on your car? You gotta pay me for the car before it leaves the shop. You want a freebie? Get your kid to work on the car. I don't know how to work on engines. Oh, sure you do. It's all math and science. You're a nerd. All you need are the books. You know what? Maybe I will. I'll run you out of business. Well, I am so afraid. You should be. What, did I touch a nerve there, kid? Let the adults talk, okay, Worm? Since when do adults wear sweatpants all day? Worm, drop it! What do you say, Gomes? Just this one time. Let me have the car. As much as I want to give you the car, I just can't do it. I'm sorry.
I would have gotten that car if you had kept your mouth shut. Dad. No, I don't understand. I don't understand why you can't just keep quiet. He wasn't going to give you the car. Well, how do you know that? You're just a kid, okay? You're just a kid. I had to leave it at the Gomes. What do you mean you had to leave it? I gave you the money. No, I just, you know, I couldn't get the car. I, I don't understand. I gave you the money for the car. I gave it to Katie. You gave my money to your ex-wife? Well, she had to pay for rent. And she threatened to send me to jail. She had to pay rent? I, mean, I had no choice. Get the fuck out of here, Chuck. I swear to God, get out of here right now! Sorry, Cheryl. Worm. Please, just take him and get out of here. I'm gonna have to take you back to your mother's. Really, Dad? We have no place to stay. I think Steve is over. Who? Steve. You know, the guy who likes Corvettes. I know that guy. I thought she had better taste than that. <laughs> you need a bed. Why did you and Mom get divorced? Mom, I don't want to get into it, okay? She says that you never paid any attention to her, and that you were never around, and that you were scum. Scum? All men are. Including you? No, nope. children are immune. How much downforce does your real spoiler produce? How should I know? Why? I don't know. I was just thinking about a math problem. Okay. We're gonna stay at the trailer. Don't tell your mother we slept there, okay? What's the trailer? It's a place. It doesn't exist. Whoa. Look at all these trophies. <sighs> yeah. Did you own a trophy store or something? No, I won them. You don't win anymore. I haven't won since I'm 16. I'm almost 16. No, you're 12. What happens when you're 16? Nothing happens when you're 16, okay? Well, you stopped winning. That was different. Come on. What if it's a choker, Gene? Where'd you hear that? I don't know. I'm a kid. I hear things and then I repeat them. So, what happened? Did did you lose your coordination or become spastic or something? No, I wasn't a spaz. I didn't become spastic or retarded or... You're supposed to say special person. I wasn't a fucking special person, okay? Shit happens! You want to know what happens in 16? I'll tell you what happens in 16, okay? Everything changes at 16. That's the age everything changes. That's the age 
Your old man decides to show up at the track and become part of your life. Your dad? Right. That's right. Saturday night at the bowl. Supposed to be like any other Saturday night until he comes marching in. Tells everybody everything's different. Changes everything up. Takes over as my pit boss. Who? No. <sighs> A mean old man. I mean, he wasn't then, but he sure is now. I remember that race. Because you won? No, because I could have won. I was in the lead up until the second to last lap, and that's when I saw him in the grandstands, acting like a big shot, talking to talent scouts. And that's when I did it. Did what? Turned the car. I turned the car into the wall. Dad. Balled it up pretty bad. I haven't won anything since. I guess it wasn't the best move. Cheryl kicked me out. Well, this is not the deal, Chuck. Take him to work with you or something. I work a double shift so I can pay off my car. So now my plans have to change because of you. Sorry. Hey. Hi, Zoom Zoom. Huh? Zoom Zoom. Oh, you don't have a car, so you can't Zoom Zoom. Nice shades. Yeah, thanks. They're Porsche. What, are you here to race me? Fuck you, Steve. Jack, what are you doing here? Well, Sal, I... I thought I'd come down and ask you one last time for a little help. <laughs> now you want my help? <laughs> now you come crawling back when you got nowhere else to turn? Sal. Why don't you get your old man to help you? No one knows where he is. Sal, is I was just thinking that maybe you could lend me one of your older cars just so I can enter the race to get to Daytona. So you come back and ask me, because I'm already here. Let's go ask Sal. He'll help you out. Well, it worked for you for a while. When I was a kid, Sal. It worked for both of us. I gave you everything, Chuck. I know, Sal, I know. And then you dropped me. You turned away. So he was my father. I was 16. What was I supposed to do? Look, I'm asking you. Please. Team up with me. We could win races like we used to. We were unstoppable. You and me. Maybe you're right. Oh, what you doing with this has-been, Sal? Uh, this has-been would have kicked your ass last week if, if my tires hadn't gone away. Well, I thought you said there's nothing wrong with your car. I rethought it. My car was pushing all over the place, and it was loose out. Driving wins races. Uh, does it, Twinkie? I was tied in, and no, it's a tasty cake. I had all kinds of electrical problems. And a bad pit stop. My power steering went out. My front spoiler folded up on me. Sway bar broke. Lost the spring rubber. My brakes were overheating. Oh. I had to pump them before every turn. You had to pump them or you had to hump them? I wasn't quite sure. Break it up. Hey. You did what you had to do, Chuck. And now I got to do what I got to do. 
I got no car for you. Come on, kid. I'm gonna race the brain. Hey, check it out. It's called the Vernado. I saw it on TV the other night. Sweet. Say, uh, how's a NOS hookup? You get Chuck to race you, show him who's king of the road. We'll give all the credit to the Vornado here. I like it. Good work. Polarized. It's currently 55 degrees. Hi, I'm Rob of Rob's Furniture, and I want to remind you to come on down to the Speed Bowl tomorrow for the Rob's Sparkler Shootout to Daytona. While you're heading down to the race, why not stop in at Rob's store and check out a lazy Rob recliner? Can I help you with anything in particular? Not in particular. Okay, well, if you need anything, uh, I'll be right here. What do you think of the Lazy Rob recliner? It's one hell of a chair, Rob. I saw you coming out of Sal's office the other day, and I saw something in you. You did, Rob? I want you to drive the Rob's Furniture Express down in Daytona. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> so what do you think? You will never sit in a more comfortable chair. Where's Rob? Uh, he is in the back, shooting a commercial. So, if you buy the chair today, I can have it delivered to you by tomorrow. He wasn't just here? Nope, he is in the studio. So, what about the chair? Yeah, I'll take the chair. Hey, Chuck. You look like a hell. How are you gonna race this weekend? Uh, not this weekend. I'm gonna spend some time with my son. Bullshit. Just tell him the truth, Chuck, huh? You should tell him you're broke. Your mechanic won't give you the car back to race unless you pay him. I don't see how it's any concern of yours. Yeah, I guess you're right. It doesn't matter. You can't hang with those guys anyway. They're real race car drivers. One of them's going to Daytona. And check this out. I don't see anything. Yeah, that's the point, Hotshot. Just got me a set of Rob's Markless Wicker Furniture. Been sitting in it all day, that guy's a freaking genius. <sighs> Not like you, Chuck. I mean, face it, man, you're an airport limo driver. You suck at that, too. Why do you have to talk to me like that? Because you're a liar. A big liar. You know how I know? No, I don't, Steve. Why don't you tell me? Well, the other day, I was going to the airport. It took me 15 minutes and I was motoring. So there's no way you could do it in 12. And why's that? because I'm the best driver this company's got. Oh, you see that banner over there, Steve? How do you think the 12 minutes got on there? Enough! I've got two things to say. One, Chuck did a 12-minute run. And two, we got an airport pickup, so somebody get going. Then it's said, Chuck is the best driver of the company. Yeah, bullshit. I'll race you right now. I'll show you who's best. Why don't you do it, Chuck? Because he can't do it. Come on, speed racer. You beat me to the airport, I'll uh, pay to have your car repaired. What's the hitch? Well, there's no hitch. If you win, I'll pay to have your car repaired, you get it back. If I win, I'll pay to have your car repaired and I'll get it back. What are you gonna do with this car if you win? I'm gonna crush it. 
and turn it into a fucking coffee table. <laughs> Come on, man, you say you can do it in 12 minutes. Somebody get going! Oh, are you, are you afraid you're gonna choke? You're on. Okay, guys, the pickup is at Terminal 2. The first guy pick up the customer, win. Go! Might engage nitro power. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Come on! <laughs> yes! Yes! <sighs> yes! Hi, I gotta get home in ten minutes. I have a date. Pay up, Porsche boy. Get the hell out of my car. Yeah, how'd it go? I lost the race, asshole. Cause the Vornado didn't work. It should have worked. I installed it myself. I, I, I don't know, I hit the button and nothing happens. Yeah, it's probably cause you're an idiot. It's probably exactly what happened. You probably fucked it up, you asshole. Lou? Yeah, Lou. Now you tell Steve he wanted a fair race and that's what he got. Get out there and get those cars fixed up. I got a company to run. I see you got your car back. Yep. They delivered a chair for you today. Oh, right. Sorry about that. Why are you here? I don't know. You drove all the way out here, but you don't know why you're here? Come on, Cheryl. Come on what? What? What, did you come here to apologize or something? Then apologize, Chuck. Just apologize. Well, if I do, will you come to the race with me? No. See, see, that is not how it works. Okay, you have to take the risk. You have to put yourself out there and apologize, 
and then I get to decide if I accept it or not. And then you have to deal with the outcome. Okay, I'm sorry. It was a bad time, I had no money. And Katie could sometimes be Katie. I mean, it was stupid, I'm sorry. Well, are you gonna come with me? No, Chuck, I'm not coming. Right. What are you doing? We're gonna be late. We've got a busy weekend. I can't go, Dad. You can't go. He can't go. He's got homework to do. Well, he'll do it at the track like he always does. Yeah, except that he's not actually doing it. He got an F on his math test the other day. I mean, how is he supposed to get into college like this? Katie. Don't Katie me. I mean, what do you want him to live in a trailer park and shack up with some bimbo? With... <laughs> you know, do you remember the deal that we had, huh? You were supposed to pay for his college. How much money do you have saved up? Well, if I get into Daytona, I could pay for his college. You know, I'm coming down. What? Okay. I want half for Willie's school and half of your half for me. Okay, wait, what does that leave for me? You get to race, and you get the only person who's willing to go to the racetrack with you anymore. Okay, fine. It's a deal, all right? Come on, Worm, let's go. It's Willie. What? It's Willie. Call me Willie, and I'll go with you. Okay. Willie. Come on, let's go. We're gonna be late. We got 30 minutes to get to the race. Welcome to the Rob Shootout to Daytona. The winner of this race is gonna have his dream come true and have a chance to qualify for the Daytona 500. The pits are buzzing with activity as the drivers get their cars ready for the Daytona shootout. Willie. Is it Will or Willie? Willie is fine, but when I'm in my mid-20s, don't change the will. Let's strap the car. I'm going to fuel her up, all right? You got it. Hey, Chuck, you only got three minutes till the grid closes. Thanks, Dan. Free, Dad. All right, stay clear. I'm starting her up. Drivers report to the grid. All cars need to be on the track in one minute or you will start at the end of the field. Willie, help me with the belt. Buckle that helmet. All right, you get the radios, OK? What you doing here, Gomes? Oh, well, I got nothing else, kid. Well, what about your magnets and the exploding balloon? Our country is depending on those, remember? Well, nobody wants any part of that. Can't tax free energy. Nobody wants part of something you can't tax. Well, you got your engine building business. Still got that, but to tell you the truth, your dad's about the only guy who still comes to me. Let me see what you got there. Show these to Cheryl. She's not with us. Fixing up the old man's car, huh? Yeah, it should be easy, right? Just math. Kid, 
I am going to give you some intellectual property, a piece of the master equation. But it is for you and nobody else. You got it? Got it. All right, now look. You haven't taken into account the coefficient of friction for the blacktop surface. You're right. You stand for the race, Gomes? Gomes? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Rob's Shootout to Daytona, where the winner will take my car down to Daytona and try to qualify his way into the Daytona 500. Gentlemen, start your engines. Remember, folks, this is short track racing. When the yellow comes out, we don't count the laps. It's a big night here at the Speedball. Even the speedy little mascot is here. We have a new car on the track. It looks like Chuck in the 57. He'll join the field in the back. Lights bright out here. Oh my god. Are you kidding me right now? No. The field is making their way around the track, warming up their tires and getting ready to race. Race is all yours, buddy. Sal, you really should get yourself a lazy rod chair. You bet. Willie, when the green flag drops, you let me know. The pace car pulls off. Buddy, in car number 94, leads the pack toward the green flag. Willie, you concentrate on the starter. The minute he drops that green flag, you let me know. Just wait for the green flag. When it drops, you tell me, okay? Did you hear me? Willie! Willie! The green is out and we're racing. Go, go, go! Cheryl! Cheryl, is that you? Let's go get him, Chuck. I'm going to Daytona, boys. Buddy pulls out of the front, leads a pack around. Looks like you're right about Buddy. Yeah, he's a natural. He could take us all to the top. Chuck, you have 29 laps to get to the front, so don't do anything stupid. With Chuck in the 57 bringing up the rear. But it's a long race, folks. But right now, it looks like Buddy is untouchable. Keep it smooth and hit your mark. Buddy pulls the lead. The car is behind him, jockey around. Looks like nobody has this stuff for Buddy tonight. Twenty more laps and your boy goes to Daytona, Sal. <laughs> I don't think I can move up anymore. Hang back, Chuck. The number three is sliding all over the place. He's going to take out half the field. Yellow's out. Yellow is out. The pits are open. You want to bring it in? Is anybody else coming in? No. This will put me in last place with 20 laps to go. Chuck, we got to make that car better. You can drive the crap out of it, but if that car can't handle it, you will never get to the front. OK, we're bringing it in. The 57 quickly hits to the pits. Remember, as long as he gets back on the track before the green flag comes back out, he won't lose a lap. Not looking too good, is it? What kind of odds would you give me on 500? Three to one. Make it four and you got a bet. Bet. <laughs> you know, I was thinking, if we take the camera to negative five, and add some tire pressure in the rear, we should get more surface in contact with the track. How'd you figure that out? Okay, let's go, let's go. I don't know, books? All right, uh, let's get a little more grip in the rear, though. I'll get the camber change. Willie, get a pound in the rear. You got it. They have the wreck car on a book, and we're almost cleaned up. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Do you have 
Where's the other hood pin? What other hood pin? The hood pin. There's a hood pin missing. I don't have the other pin. You're missing a pin. Okay. Uh, crap. Not now. Don't um, let me back on the track without that pin. Oh my god. Think of something. Something. All right. <laughs> Go, go, go! Chuck is back on the track. Rejoining the field at the rear with 19 to go. The green is out. Just like taking candy from a baby. How many to go? 15 laps to go. It looks like the Chuck of old is making a late race charge. The 15 7 goes low. He goes past the 82. Yes. Wow, the 57 just went by the 54. That boy is on fire. <laughs> we'll see who wins. The 57 makes another pass. Now he's in second. Right behind Buddy. It was mirror, Chuck, and set him up for the pass. The 57 closes in on Buddy in the 94. Oh, Chuck, you don't belong here. Hell, even if he gets in front, he'll choke. You see? Here we go. Five to go. The Chuck is making his move. He's pulled alongside the 94. The 57 surges forward. Now in first. Chuck takes the lead with four to go. Put the pressure on, buddy. Let me show you how it's done, Chuck. Come on, buddy. Put him in the wall. That's cheap. That's racing. Well, as cheap as this fabric. Just kidding. Three to go. It looks like Buddy wants to lead back. Bring it home, Chuck. Coming to get you, Chuck. Buddy moves it tighter, get tighter. Buddy is still behind you. Chuck shakes him off. Trying to hold it together, aren't you? He's on my bumper, he's right on my bumper. What, are you kidding me? Just drive, Chuck. Stop thinking and drive. That's easy for you to say. It's getting pretty dicey out here. That's when I did it. I turned the car into the wall. I haven't won anything since. I have an idea. All right, well, I'll listen to anything because I already know how this is going to end. What do you got? Tell him to drive the car into the wall. You sure will? I'm positive. Just tell him to do it. Chuck, drive deep into turn one and then turn the car into the wall. You know, Racer, Racer never blames himself. I got news for you, Chuck. The only breakdown you had is in there. It happened 20 years ago, and it just keeps on happening. No! No, not this time. This time I'm gonna win! The 57 charges into turn one. Do we see this before, haven't we? Buddy is still behind you. Come on, come on, come on. Chuck holding him off and keeps the car off the wall. Just hang in there, Chuck. One to go. Buddy is surging forward. He's going to try and beat Chuck to the stripe. They exit turn four. It's a race to the checker. Checker falls. Chuck wins. This man is going to drive the Rob's Furniture Express to victory in the Daytona 500. And remember, our wicker patio furniture is marvelous. I guarantee it. You got my two grand? And you want to double up? Just put the money in my hand. Thanks. <laughs> we did it. We did it.
was amazing. How did you come up with those setups? Thank you, boy. He came up with those final tweaks. Really? Yeah. Hey. Ah, final tweaks for you, huh? Ah, good job. Go see the monkeys or something? Dad. How about the seals? They're always funny. Wacky seals. Dad. What, really? What? Look. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying. I really am. But I'm just not, I'm not good at this stuff. We only got three weeks till Daytona. Right. And we got a car to sort out. <laughs> you said it, son. Race to the exit? I'm 12. Yeah, stupid idea. Come on, let's go. Hey, wait up. At Rob's Furniture, we have designed a line of markless wicker furniture. You can sit in it for up to three hours without a mark. Why would we do this? Because we cannot afford a markless wicker furniture gap. Look, markless, no marks from the wicker. <laughs> My furniture! <laughs> <laughs>